Yeah, and I found one little typo on the uh, A4 where it says band donation. It should be basin electric. If you want to make that, I think that already has that correction, but that's just a typo instead of basic. It's basin electric. Okay. And so, what we're going to do is we have a motion to. I'll move to the agenda with additional bills. And the correction on the mandatory. I have been made for Yeah, I'll second that. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Harrelson. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda with, agenda with additional bills and the correction on item A4. Any discussion? Seeing that, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. <laughs> the eyes have it. All right. Thank you. And we see um, next is good things happening. Um, a reminder to look at the monthly good news on the website. And it's been playing behind us. Um, lots of cool stuff going on. And several donations. Okay, uh, the golf donation from the Cowboy Derby for $6,500. Band donation from Hawkins Ranch sponsorship program for $500. Band donation from TT Enterprises for $750. And a band donation from Mason Electric for fifteen hundred dollars. Very good. Very cool. All right, moving on to correspondence. Yes. While we're talking about monthly good news, um, we do want to uh, make note of the band as they superior rating. Start out 
on the band topic of saying and thanks to everyone in the district for helping me um, do what I'm able to do for the kids because um, the kids get so much out of it. At, at our last evening rehearsal of Marching Men season last Thursday night, um, every year I let any senior that wants to just talk about their experience because it's like an emotional night for them. Some of them, it's their fifth year in band and it's cathartic for them to talk about it. And many of them make comments like, this is why I wake up. This is why I come to school. This is why I do, like, go through what I go through in school. Um, it's what brings them joy. And I experienced that in school, and that's why I got into doing what I do. Um, the big, great performance at State Marching Band Festival was great. It's good to see the kids marching around on the floor. It's good to see them playing their hearts out and making music. But for me, it's like, I think music is, and this is my opinion, and I'm obviously biased, but music is the best way to teach kids to be good people. And that's, that's my inc incredibly biased opinion, you know. Um, some would say it's football, some would say it's welding, some would say it's ag, and I think they're all right um, in their frame of mind. But because of the support that I have from this district, I get to hear those comments from those seniors saying, this is why I still come to school. This is why it was worth it for me to finish and not just drop out and get a GED. Um, and that's how I know like, I'm in the right line of work and I'm able to do it with the relative ease that I do it in time, you know, working with teenagers. Um, but it's, it's, it is what it is because of the support I get from the school. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. Now, I'm, I guess, not unfortunately, but I have to take a turn with my visitors' comments time because I, I want to talk about the subbing situation in the district. Um, I'm really only, let me pause and back up. And if this has been spoken about recently at a board work session or in emails to you all, um, I apologize for being a broken record, but I think it's important to talk about. Um, I was mentally preparing my remarks on the drive up here, and you know, I was thinking about comparing our sub pay rate to other districts, and I, I don't think that's the point, because we're not other districts. You know, I, I hear what um, subs are paid in XYZ location, and I don't think that matters, because my perception and the perception of many of my colleagues is that there's a sub shortage in our district, and we need to find something to attract subs. And it's impacting us as teachers in quality of life, which I'll get to, um, I believe it's impacting our students because I'm not going to say we don't have quality subs, but when we don't have enough subs to cover every day, I don't think we're getting the best subs that we can. Um, too often I see emails go out from the secretaries saying, hey, so-and-so is going to be gone and I don't have a sub, can you cover? Who can cover first period? Who can cover second period? Who can cover third period? And we work in a district where we have incredibly selfless teachers and they do it. They give up their planning period with no compensation to make sure that students are supervised, even if they're not being educated. Uh, more than once, I know middle school students have just been sent to the library to make sure that they're supervised. Um, meanwhile, the middle school librarian is still expected to continue her duties with checking out books, doing emergency Chromebook repairs, um, taking care of other inventory items. All the while, when another teacher is able to cover another teacher's class, that teacher has to be gone for a medical appointment or for an illness, they're losing out on planning time, which affects the education that the students receive in the following weeks and months. Um, I love to be solution-oriented, and I feel like a bit of a hypocrite because I don't know what the solution is other than the generic one for our money out right? Pay our subs more is really easy to say. Um, I do not have an intimate working knowledge with our district's budget. Um, I do not know the history of where that comes from. So I know it's really easy for me to stand up and say, we'll get more subs if we pay them more. But I just wanted to express that it has an impact on the teachers because I don't, I'm afraid to take sub days. I don't know what's going to happen if like, I'll pretend to be healthy. You know, I'll, I'll go to work sick. And I know that there's other teachers that do that. Um, I'll neglect 
you know, taking my kids to the dentist and make my wife do it at her time. Um, because it's easier for, easier for her to miss days as an activities director at the nursing home than it is for me to miss days as a band teacher in the school district. Um, I'll wait to go and hopefully get a dentist appointment during the summer rather than going and seeing it get done because I'm afraid that I'm going to take away from my colleagues' time. Or I'm afraid that it's going to put stress on our secretaries. And what worries me is that we have, we rarely have days where the people that are on our list to substitute in this district, we rarely have days when they're not working. And I feel if we had an adequate sub pool, we would have days where subs didn't get to work. Because we should have a surplus to make sure that subs also get days to go to the dentist and also have days to take their kids. Um, again, I wish I had a solution. I wish I could say, here's the magic bullet to get more subs to be willing to sub in our district. And I hate to say that, you know, the golden the golden bill is, is money, but sometimes that's what it comes down to. But um, I know it's been talked about in IBB in years past and that it has been discussed and um, not approved to increase sub pay, but this is in the forefront of my mind because the other day I had to take a sub day for, I cannot remember what now, but I, I took time to make sub plans and I prepared my band students well to be able to run the band class without me because, you know, it can be scary to sub a music class. It's loud, it's noisy. A lot of people have never played a saxophone, let alone a saxophone and a trumpet and a flute and a clarinet and a tuba and a trombone and drums and guitar. Um, so who would want to suffer my class must be a crazy person or a former band teacher. But, you know, I took the time to make sub plans and then I found out last minute, hey, your kids are just going to go in the library and do whatever they want to do. Because we, I couldn't find a sub for you. And then uh, the backup plan was Mr. Daniel was going to cover my classes and then him being an administrator, he had something he had to go attend to, which, you know, great, that's high level stuff that only an administrator can do. And he should be able to do that. He should not be burdened with covering my classes as somebody with the credentials that he has. Um, but then my students who are nervous for an upcoming concert or want to be playing their instrument because it's fun are told, hey, go sit on your Chromebook in the library. And I was frustrated because I took time to make up plans. My students were frustrated because they didn't need to play their instrument. I'm sure that the librarian is frustrated because now suddenly she's got 28 additional kids in her space when she needs to be taking care of X, Y, Z. Um, and had we had more subs, problem solved. Um, you know, Mrs. Murray at the middle school, who lines up our subs as the secretary, did the best that she could with the resources that she had. Um, and once again, I just I hate because what I always ask my students if they bring me a problem, like what are your ideas? What have you tried? And I I just I can't be that guy. I can't come here and say, well, I've tried this to get more subs. I've asked everybody that in Wheatland that I know to sign up to be a sub on our roster. Um, and I'm not sure why, because I think the kids we've gotten plat one on the whole are great kids. I don't know who wouldn't want the sub. But we just don't. We just don't have the subs. And it's always a scramble, no matter how much time our secretaries have to pull that off. And so I would strongly encourage them, if, if we can't do anything besides let the people that are considering subbing in our district, or the people that do sub in our district, if we can't do anything besides offer to pay them more, um, I, then I would just strongly encourage that the next time that comes up, post IBB discussions and when it comes time to make a decision as a board, I would just urge you to strongly consider finding a way to make that sub pay increase <coughs> um, happen. And I know that it's a lot more difficult than I'm probably doing. <coughs> Once again, I don't have a working knowledge of the budget. I don't know where the pennies fall, but I do know that our kids' educations are suffering because we don't have sense. And that teachers' qualities, the quality of life is suffering because we're afraid to take some days. I, I, I won't speak for the staff. I'm afraid to take some days. And statistically, I can't be the only teacher that feels that way. Um, and if that is the reputation, when teachers talk to other teachers and people are considering coming to our district, it makes us less competitive. And I don't want us to be less competitive because 
two days ago in Casper, Wyoming at the Fort Bend Center, I just got to see firsthand the excitement that comes from our district being competitive. So, I'm sorry, I tend to ramble. I should have written it down and just read you an essay, but um, that's how I feel. Those are my thoughts, and I thank you for taking the time to listen to me speak. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share your concerns.
$8,025.38 is for flat one activities. Just so you guys can kind of compare from year to year just to kind of see where it would be at. And then um, September, 17403 is for flat one activities out of the $142,525. Um, and the federal grants, um, moving on. Um, this is all of our grant money. Um, 31,183.41 for August. Um, the big purchase was for Alexia Learning Systems, which came out of the literacy grant. That was in year 23, sorry, August of 23. And then September, our big purchase uh, is for the advanced exercise equipment of 258.083.16, and that was funded out of the park. Um, the next slide is the total district comparison. Again, it's kind of hard to compare year to year just because you're working on different things. You have different grants coming in and different projects going in and out with the construction funds. Um, questions or upcoming tasks, always feel free to reach out. Um, to give you a little update, we're finalizing our 23 audit with our auditors right now. Um, they are in the process of compiling everything. We have not received our exit meeting yet with John and myself. Um, they're hoping to get to us shortly. They are wrapping up some other school district's audits, and then we are next on their list. Um, they have all of our information at this time. Um, I'm working on the data validation with WDE regarding all of our state reports that we submit in July from the 601, the 100 times A, B, and C, the 401, all of those. Their WDE is just now getting to their data validation. So they're comparing all of those reports and having us justify the reasons for COVID or whatever. Um, we're finishing up getting our bid information out to all insurance providers that are looking at providing a bid. And policy updates, we are meeting as subcommittees, and I am one of those subcommittees meeting with Dustin and Mr. Boaz. And so we're finishing up those policy updates. Just a clarification for me. So we have, because Prairie View is not our own pass through this, like Parks and Rec have passed through. Um, Parks and Rec, you guys have approved the mill levy that they, so they, we do not, yes, we kind of pass through in a way, but you guys approve of that, okay. of that mill that we are putting up. So is that in that same category of this agency then? No. Oh. No, no, because I think you guys vote on that when you approve the budget, and you do not approve anything with Prairie View's budget. You don't approve how much they receive. So this is just their pass through or ADM. Correct. Okay. But it so it's showing up as an expenditure. Um, it shows up as so we take it out. It shows up as revenue coming into the agency fund and exiting. But I do not report revenue on these. Okay. So it's it's basically a wash. It's they, a wash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the, the, state, kind of yeah, like. the state provides me with the Excel sheet. They say how much our money is and how much I have to give to them. So I use the state's Excel sheet basically as their invoice. Here's what I owe you and you can see from WTE this is how much we have to provide to you. I do give just a little confusing to me that it looks like it's an expenditure when it really is a wash. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to make sure that's the way I was understanding it. So the and exercise equipment that you talked about, mm -hmm. you seeing where is that going? I can talk a little bit about that. So that was one of the uh, areas we could use for SR3, which would be staff wellness, student wellness, cleanliness, because it uses the weight room. And it's used as a locker room. So think about the kids in there sweating, those materials that are there, it's just time to probably do something different in there. Uh, they kind of meet the needs of community, staff, students, and healthy spaces. That's kind of what we're looking that. Okay.
Things are going pretty fast right now, it seems like. We've done all of our universal screening. So we screen all the kids and their, uh, where they come in, math, reading, and behavior. And then based on that, we, we put kids into different reading interventions and we give them the math interventions that they need. That might include Title I, could be, could be a referral towards special education, or it could just be um, like first and second grade. They, we shuffle them around and give them a different skill in reading. Um, with other other peers that need the same skill rather than giving them a whole group and trying to break them up and give them what they need for a half hour day there. Um, but there's more on that data next month that we're, we're going to talk data with y'all. So we got a lot of stuff we can share with you then. Um, along those lines, too, as a staff, we've been reviewing the uh, individual reading plans, and that's, that's part of WDE's um, K3 literacy statute that they adopted. So every kid that isn't on grade level, um, our responsibility is to give them a, a reading plan that will be shared with the parents. And so those screeners and then the diagnostic tests that show exactly what skills are learning and then how we're going to help um, build those skills up, we do that, we'll do that with all of those all those students in there. So been reviewing that um, as grade levels and then as a whole school, like how, what direction we're going to go with that. So we're trying to coordinate that, and then those will go through at a minimum in third grade and perhaps fifth grade as well with less. Um, so we've been pretty busy with that. Additionally, we we're having some fun. We've had field trips. Um, every grade level's been on one fall field trip already. Um, another thing that we're doing this year, we have uh, Miss Marker. Last year we didn't have an official counselor. This year we do. One of the things that we brought back that we did with Mr. Gardner when we had him is we had uh, Council around our PBIS team, and so that's uh, positive behavior intervention support is their system is what that is, and so uh, we brought that back, and uh, we have a team that goes through things, and that's what that little handout is that, that you guys got to have like gumballs on the bottom. So uh, basically, this kind of goes into the whole theory of. Um, um, we want to, uh, first of all, we want to teach kids the behaviors that are going to help them be successful. When we see them doing the behaviors, we positively reward them for those behaviors. And then uh, individually and then collectively, we, we keep track. But you see like bubble gum balls that we get, those are up on the billboard, so those get stamped up there. And like the small one, number one, this Friday, like that, they filled up that, that with 100, 100 kids have got gumballs so they'll get hacked at this point. And then as of today we filled up level two and so like that'll be an extra recess. And then the third one, each one kind of gets a little bigger as we go along. And then we'll um, we'll pull all those gumballs off and have like a lottery type winning and do drawings for kids to give them another uh, like an assembly to uh, reward them for making positive decisions. Then our first one is just basically academic readiness stuff. So when teachers see them with eyes on speaker, hands and body still, and voices off, um, after like that lesson, then the teacher will be like, hey, little Shane, you did a good job there. Here's your, here's your gumball ticket. And then we we'll bring, go oh, three or four of them will come down to the office. And then we throw them in the big pile. We give them the real gumball, and then they go back. So. That's kind of how it works as far as that goes. And then as a staff, we figure out how we're going to reward them for making good choices every day. Any questions about that? Yeah. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of how you get us work. Reward them for making good choices. Um, and then uh, along the, the next is the literacy grant. So we have the white belt grant. So this is our second in three years that we have the white belt grant. And this year, um, this year and next year, roughly, we get about $444,000 that goes towards um, early childhood through 12th grade literacy in there. So 15% of that goes to early childhood, 40 elementary, K-5, and then 40 secondary, 6 through 12 in there. And so for the most part, most of the money is um, been encumbered in there. Um, K-5, we spend most of our chunk, which is about 100 35,000 or so on professional development, uh, we've done letters, those of you that are on with us last year too, we all presented on that as well. Um, so we're in year two of that, and this will be like in our professional development as far as that goes, we'll be done with the letters, unless they're 
unless we have people new to the district. At the secondary level, they have an intervention. Is Mr. Sound in here? He's in my office. He's in the office. So, uh, I don't remember the name. And then also, Reed 180. Reed 180. 180. And then also, uh, System 44, maybe, for the, um, as an intervention as well. Um, so, so uh, that's taken care of most of it. And then early childhood, we have like Katie Marquez at, She's a levy and then she goes out and uh, she goes to Piccadilly and the early childhood center and does lessons with them and teaches them like how to teach from the awareness to kids and things like that. Um, also we use it with um, Glendo, um, the show gives Mrs. Hanny, who's down here to the childhood. So, uh, but there's a little bit in there for supplies and then um, professional development from the early childhood center too. That's kind of the basic stuff. Is there anything else? Big stuff on that? Any questions about your hands? Mm -hmm. Questions for Shane now? Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Shane. Right. Well, thank thank you. you. So, Tom Ware's going to talk a little bit about uh, West Elementary and he's going to share a little bit about Title I. Yeah, so uh, I told Shane earlier not to steal all my answers. You know how kids always like, they took mine. Well, um, so we have 188 kids last I checked, which was two days ago. That's went from, uh, just this quarter, it's went from like 184 to 192. And when I checked a couple days ago, it was 188. So it's going up and down, um, as every year does. Um, we've also completed YTOC, completed Fast Ridge um, with reading and math and behavior. Um, we've also done spelling inventory, passed for those students that need those things. Um, Title has done their groupings and finished their first six week cycle of interventions. Um, so we'll be starting, I think they're testing next week again, retesting, and then starting their next six week cycle. So um, if you're in Title I, the first cycle, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll stay in there for your whole life. It's skill based, you pass out of that skill, you're out of it. Um, third grade does that same thing. They're doing a lot of skill based reading things um, right now and they do about a half an hour a day where they have all four third grade teachers plus a title teacher plus the title para plus the librarian. So they're breaking up their 66 students uh, among seven different people um, to make sure they're hitting those skills that those kids need. Um, we finished up parent-teacher conferences. We have, how many kids do we have in band this year? I tried to guess. I 40 said, at once? Oh, I said about 40, so yeah. I was right. So, okay. um, I, I don't know if I talked him into it or bullied him into it, but Evan agreed this year to do band for fifth graders. Nice. Um, they are loving it, I think. I feel like they are. They're always carrying instruments back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I hear noises coming out of there. Um, that's accurate. <laughs> noises. Up eventually, I enjoy music. But I know eventually it turns into music because mine started in fifth grade. So I know eventually it turns into music. But um, I'm just glad to see those kids. Uh, it's completely volunteers. So we have 66 fifth graders and 40 of them chose to be in band. Um, I think that's, that's good for for Mr. Bradley, good for those kids to get involved. Um, we have between 25 and 30 in friendship group lunches. Uh, so these are volunteer-ish. So we uh, volunteer kids to meet with other kids at lunch. So our counselor, um, instead of going to lunch, she pulls groups. And so she sees a kid that looks like they might need a couple more friends or they don't know how to get along with people, she'll still pull that kid and then three or four people that she thinks could help them. Um, it's funny because when I talk to parents in third grade, they're always worried about it. And fourth and fifth grade parents, I never get calls from because the fourth and fifth grade kids ask Mrs. Magnuson if they can be in a group because they want to help. They, they like that mm -hmm. sitting in there. And it's, you know, everything from you know, getting picked on at recess to my home life is horrible, and the kids just kind of talk about it. Um, there's not a lot of counseling going on. It's just uh, a time where they can spill. Um, 
Mrs. Magnuson leads the conversation, but she doesn't dictate what they're going to talk about. It's an open conversation among friends. Um, and like I said, we have about 25 to 30 kids that are involved in that. And it always starts out with kids we really want to help, and then the other kids ask if they can come into it. So it's a really neat thing that she does. Um, our fifth graders are putting up and taking down the flags every day with Mr. Frank. He's teaching them what to do, when to do, and how to do. Um, teaching them how to fold them every night. Uh, they, they get out of class at about 3.15, and usually two to three of them come down, and Frank takes them outside. Uh, he does not put them up if it is raining or the wind's blowing over 50, which here, that means half the year, they will not be up, just so you know. Um, because we don't want to get them all ripped up and all that. And we've already had to replace the flag uh, string this year because it broke and had a, a kid, 20-year-old uh, kid come in and say, I don't know if this is on purpose, but all of your flags are outside on the ground. I'm like, no, that's probably not on purpose. <laughs> so we got that fixed. Um, we're still working through the water issues. If you hadn't heard, we had a pipe break. Well, we did not. Someone broke a pipe the first day of school um, that uh, is a direct line into our building. So we are still dealing with a lot of sand issues in our pipe. Um, I think Cody Heimsoft is getting sick of calls from us saying, come check this one out. I think we've uh, emptied out the, the hot water heaters twice to get sand out of them. I think he's went through and fixed every single sink in the building and almost every toilet in the building just because of sand. Luckily, we are sending that bill to the city and the city is sending that bill to the company that broke the pipe. Um, so, but it's just a pain. You know, uh, it feels like every day there's a new sink or a new toilet that's not working. And, and yes, yes, uh, Mr. Toll, every time he comes into my building, he just walks in and He's like, which one? Where do I go? He told me about two weeks in that he should just set up an office in my room. He's just working out of there. But we're still working through it. I mean, it's getting better and better. The kids aren't getting sand in their water bottles anymore, so that's good. Um, our two, we have two new teachers. They're fitting and great, working hard. I love going into their classes. Um, well run. Um, it's just nice to see uh, classroom management. Because, um, you know, when the principal walks in, there's always a hoopla, no matter what grade level. They're, someone's in trouble, or they want to talk, or they want to pull you over there. Um, so the class gets a little unruly. Uh, so I just explain to them that that's the way I check their classroom management. So I go in there and rile them up, and then when I leave, how long does it take you to get them back under control? <laughs> and they're good. It's like a minute. It's, it's nice. Um, I don't know if Mr. Schaffner's been doing this, but we went through our first couple of weeks of the first sickness of the year, where it went to fifth grade, and then three days later, all the third graders, we had like 20 third graders out, and then the next week we had a bunch of fourth graders, and then a couple of teachers, so I think we're, we're over the hump on the first sickness, so we're preparing for the January sickness when they come back from Christmas break. Um, I hope everyone's been asked to buy a pie, because pie sales are done. Uh, all, all pie forms are due tomorrow, so that we can get those sent to the company, so everyone can get their pies by mid-November. The company promised this year, um, and gave us a great deal. Uh, if you guys don't know, the pie is the PTO fundraiser. Last year, we raised almost $10,000. Uh, but the PTO spent exactly $10,000 on giving back to kids. Um, they buy water bottles, they buy uh, workbooks, they buy whatever we need. Um, the muffins for mams, the donuts for dudes. Um, they provide all art supplies for all new and coming third graders. Um, so that's what they do. We've had fire safety. Mr. Schaffner had fire safety. I saw his pictures on the thing. Um, yours was nice, ours was raining in 50, so the out time, outside time that the kids spent at ours was not very long, because it was cold. Um, I know the new, the new guy in head, of the, uh, the head of fire safety wanted it to be more personable, so he handed out every packet to the kids personally. 
instead of just giving them to the teachers and saying, pass these out, he wanted to say hi to each kid. It took a little longer, but I thought it was really nice. Uh, we have the fourth grade electrical safety coming up. That's always fun. They bring in a lot of electricity and burn up hot dogs and make the whole gym stink. Um, so that one's coming up. The fourth graders love it. We also have book fair starting November 6th through the 10th that week. And we'll do our Title I sponsored literacy night that night. I already have six teachers signed up for different things they want to do for literacy night. Any questions about West? It's moving and grooving. Okay, so Title I, Consolidated Grants. <laughs> so the consolidated, the consolidated grant is big. Um, Mr. Weigel and I spent uh, a lot of time talk, talking through this. Um, I think the one day when we ended up actually doing it, we were like four hours straight with no breaks where we just went through every single tab that could be tabbed. And then naturally, you never do anything right the first time, so it wasn't approved. And then sent it back and it wasn't approved. And sent it back and it wasn't approved. And right, we didn't we changed stuff that was still in there from like 2016. So we couldn't figure out why it was approved last year when it had 2016-17 data, and then this year when we put in our new data, they were like, yeah, we don't want that. But, well, we shouldn't have pulled up. <laughs> Moving on, right? But we wanted to do it right, so that took us a couple weeks um, to get that one done. Um, the way the grants work, so we, uh, by September 30th, we had to spend all of our uh, school year 22 money. The 30th was the cutoff date, and we did spend that. I think we only had about 400 bucks left this year, which was nice, so that's easy to spend. So we zeroed out the 22. They did not take any money back from us. We spent all of it. Um, that, and that can be used. Um, we have a homeless and neglected portion of that where Karen Bayer can ask me for money for that. We have uh, the, all the Title I teachers and a couple of classroom teachers get paid out of that. Supplies for all Title I programs. Now this is uh, K-5 in Wheatland, and Glendo is targeted so they can use some specific money here. Um, we're school-wide K-5, so we can use it on any kid at any time for any reason. Um, what else in that grant do we spend money on? Oh, uh, professional development. We sent, how many went to? Seven? I think seven uh, elementary teachers went to Syracuse, New York last week for a national reading conference. I know that uh, Mrs. Benson and Mrs. Parker at my staff meeting on Friday gave us a pretty in-depth uh, explanation of what they did. And Mrs. Benson has already uh, worked with her fifth grade team to start instilling some of that stuff. Uh, that she wants to try out in her class to help with reading comprehension that our fifth graders are struggling in. Um, so we're looking at that in PD. Uh, then we have 23, 2023-24 money, or school year 23 money, that Jamie and I had a little discussion six times today um, about what, how much we have in there. Um, it gets kind of kind of puzzled in there because this money's over here and this money's over here and this money's over here and we're not sure what's encumbered by the state yet or what we put in yet and so we're we're looking at a way to compress that down so that we can figure it out easier because we don't want to get to September and the state come back and say you have fifty four thousand dollars to spend. Um, that gets really difficult. Three four hundred we could buy books with that and spread them out and that's that's where we want to get but um, so Jamie and I were talking about that today on how, how to get that uh, easier to understand because both of us are confused. Um, and when the grant manager and the business manager are confused about the grant money, we, <laughs> we need to sit down and figure out how to, how to get that going. Um, the FY24 money, which has started already, um, most of that right now we use for salaries. And then it'll break up as we get closer to the end of the year because we still have money in 23, so I can spend uh, anything that a teacher needs 
that stuff we can we can make an uh, amendment to our grant. Um, Mr. Weigel's like a professional amender now. Um, <laughs> so we can make little amendments uh, and use it for professional development. Um, we don't want to use it for pay because there's not enough in there to pay people. So that's why we use 24 money to pay this year, but we'll use that money to do other things. Um, the only part of that money that is untouchable is because last year we got over $500,000. There's a percentage that is required to be used for after school for a couple other things. There's three or four things that can be used for. What did I tell you we spent last year? Well, we started out with $5,046 and right now I have $4,500. So last year I spent $700 and I spent every single penny in every single situation that I could. Um, that's required. Like I can't take that out and move it. So we have to figure out between Shane and I how to spend $4,500 this year. Um, that's paying people for book fairs, uh, all of our, like the literacy night, we can pay the teachers for that, for their extra time that they put in there. Um, Shane will have a literacy night, math night, all on math night, um, any of these family engagement things we can pay, but if you get every single teacher there and they work for three hours, you're out a couple hundred bucks. So trying to get, I, I know it's a bad problem to have. We have to figure out how to spend forty five hundred dollars, but that gets stressful when you get get figure out things to spend it on because they stipulate you can only do this and this and this. Um, but we're working on that. The twenty four money we did not get over five hundred thousand dollars, so that stipulation is not in there. Um, and we're working on basic. Most of that goes to salaries and benefits because um, we have. Two title teachers, two classroom teachers, and two pairs that are all made out of that um, salary and, and bennies. So, um, just finishing up, titles finishing up their six week cycle. I think I said that. And then the retest for regrouping uh, literacy night. And, oh, last thing, uh, we have a Title I meeting this Friday. So, I meet with the Title I teachers, I invite the pairs also. Um, since they're involved in a lot of Title I stuff. Um, and we're going to, we'll go through our first agenda that we had at the beginning of the year, and then we'll talk about what we want to put in our data sheet for the six week cycles. Uh, I have to do a data sheet for the state, for the audit, showing what we do in our cycles. Um, and then we're going to go through what we're looking for for parent engagement activities. Uh, last year we sent out a lot of information on parent engagement and didn't get very many people. Um, I know one of the engagement activities I do a meeting with uh, homeschool and private school and we sent that out to every homeschool parent and private school in town and I had two people show up for that meeting. Um, one private, one homeschool, so they got they they cannot say they did not get information because they were the center of attention. They got, they got told exactly what Title One looks like. Um, but we send that out. The state wants us to do uh, engagement activities like on standards, which we've got to have cookies or something for that to get people to come in. Um, but we can do like how explain what math is. That like there's no such thing as common core math. Like we can. Tell them that we can talk about how our reading looks now that we went through letters training. We can talk about that. We can have a social studies night or a science night or a STEM night or um, we're supposed to have a computer night where we talk about Google and Google Drive. Um, how to look at standards based grading. We can have all these different nights, but it's getting the people in the building. If the teachers are prepared, we can talk about this stuff as you can tell for hours. Um, and we won't get bored with it, but just getting people in the building is, is the most difficult thing. So if you have ideas outside of roping them and dragging them in, um, I would take those because we need to get, I would like to get parents more involved in the Title I process, but we can only send out, I mean, we send out parent story messages, emails, phone calls, put it on Facebook, but we can only offer. Well, I would fall off a horse 
and um, I would not go very well. I probably in the book it out of my book. Any questions about consolidated grant? That's only the title one portion. There's five sides of the consolidated grant. Five? One A, two A, three A, four A? There are five? Oh yeah, the consolidated grants really the title. Yeah, title two A and title. Yeah, so the consolidated grants. I just did the this little section. Yeah. Yeah. So can any of those extra funds go towards subs? No.
So it's still sitting there. And I think every year that old building sits there, it loses value. So I would like to possibly in November um, put into the action items to actually approve to sell that building again or to make it available. Either we try to do it ourselves and save that 6% realtor fee or, or again post it maybe with the realtor and see if we can actually get rid of that building somehow. So that would be a recommendation I have. And one of the things that's kind of recent with some of the stuff we, we dealt with, um, I just want to really quick touch about crisis in school buildings. So the district uses a standard response protocol system, a lockout, lockdown, evacuate, and shelter. And I have a couple of these I can send if you guys want to look at them as a board. So this is kind of what the basic things that happen in a school, right? And it kind of talks about like when you do each one of them. So one of the things it talks about, if you do a lockout, it means the occupants are, are instructed to return inside the building. You do building as usual in terms of the lockout, right? The lockdown everybody knows that, you move away from the site, prepare to defend, maintain silence, you lock the doors, lights up, all those kinds of things. And the other two would be evacuate and shelter. So those those things are pretty standard, right? And that's like within the school day, everything's hunky dory. But when you do something before school, when you do something at lunch, when you do something after school, it takes some common sense for the building administrator and probably me as a superintendent to talk through kind of what's going on. So recently we've had a couple um, of those events, the water issue where we had to release school early the first day of school, and then the issue at the middle school. So every time we have that, we sit down as a leadership team, we debrief. What happened from start to finish? There's a lot of details that maybe as a group we don't know, we learn through that. So just realize as a district, when we have an event, we try to look at the situation, use some common sense, try to make some good decisions, and then afterwards, a group of us will sit down and debrief that, go through every step, and say, next time this happens, maybe we could communicate quicker to some of those parents. Next time that happens, even though the police didn't release some of our buses, we could have done this. That would have helped parents, right? So it is a learning situation. You know there's a million situations out there that you can't have a standard protocol for everything that could happen. A good example was we had a, we had a gas leak one time, and the place we were going to actually evacuate to was in line with those fumes. So that took that off the plate. So we had no plans, right? So you have these common sense. What's another alternative? How are we going to get kids there? How are we going to reunite students with their parents? We have went through a little sample that with our building group to talk about reunification. That's probably the most difficult one to do because you have parents who are upset. You have to have an organized process. And I think we did a pretty good job going through that with our administrative team. But just realize when we have an issue, we do debrief it. We talk about what we've learned, what we can do better next time. Because we can't have a standard protocol for everything that's going to happen in and out of school, on buses, extracurricular events, all those kinds of things. So I just want to make sure the public and everybody knew that was the case. Probably, probably sometime in January, February, we'll start bringing those forward. 
uh, to the board agendas and start approving those with recommendations from the committee. On to item 8 for our action items. We do have a whole business uh, of isolation mileage adjustment from the previous approval. Okay, you want to have, go ahead. You want to get a little explanation or you want to make a motion first? Or?
6 and the board meeting at 7. Correct. Okay. All right. All those in favor of approving the November board meeting date change from 11-20-23 at 6 p.m. to 11-13-23 at 7 p.m. to signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? You guys have it? That will pass it as well. All right, item number three, we have an approval for an isolation reimbursement request. We have the particulars in our packet. Well, Madam Chair, I'll go ahead and move to approve the isolation reimbursement request. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. I will second it. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Harrison. Any discussion? I just noticed there wasn't a total. Is that? Is that all the time? Well, no. It's 16 miles one way, 32. Total miles. Total miles. We wrote 30 miles down there. Yeah. They just, they're just doing a 16 one way and 32 total. So 16 one way and 20 days. miles <laughs> Sorry. They shouldn't be. That one shouldn't be. That it one shouldn't be. Okay. So this is just 32 so miles. Is 32 miles is, I think, I believe they're around right. Yes. Yep. That's what it sounds like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so do they do this? Do they have to do this every month? They have to do this every year. They have to do a log every month, but an application every year.
say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.